Hello, I'm Brett Etheridge, founder of Dominate the GMAT. Dominate the GMAT is a leading provider of on-demand video-based test preparation for the GMAT to help students get into business school. What you're about to see is a segment from a full lesson from one of our courses. If you like what you see, check out www.dominatethegmat.com for not only this full lesson, but other course offerings as well. For now, enjoy your free session. And here's a final really important point. If both, and you're going to see this from time to time, if both statements give you roughly the same type of information, you can immediately cross off A, B, and C. The answer is most likely going to be either D or E. And that makes sense, doesn't it? That makes sense because if the statements are giving you roughly the same information, they're either both going to be correct, they're both going to be enough information, in which case the answer would be D, or neither of them would be sufficient. Because if, if statement one's not sufficient and statement two pretty much gives you the exact same thing, then that wouldn't be sufficient either. Uh, so that's why the answer choices that you're going to choose from are either going to be D or E. Let's take a look at an example like that. Here we see a geometric shape. And as I told you before, our default assumption should be that figure is not necessarily drawn to scale meaning maybe we can manipulate it, maybe not. But nevertheless, it's a geometric shape, and the question is, is the triangle in the figure above equilateral? Well, it certainly looks equilateral, but what we're trying to do now is determine whether or not we've been given enough information mathematically in the statements to make that determination. And you see here statements one and two. Statement number one says that minor arc AB has a degree measure of 120 degrees, and statement number two says that X equals 60 degrees. All right. Now you obviously want to look at these things one at a time, but you may notice, or let's say you're not quite sure about that, and then you look at statement number two, so you don't determine sufficiency one way or the other, and you look at statement number two, and at some point it dawns on you that you've been given the same information. Now you may not know that. I'm going to teach circles in a future video. When we go over geometry, I'll teach you all the circle rules. Let me teach you a couple of circle rules here because it's important to understand. Statement number one is telling us that arc AB equals 120 degrees, minor arc AB specifically. Why does it say minor arc? Because it's the arc that's less than 180 degrees. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I labeled the diagram incorrectly. Uh, AB is over here, and that's C, according to the figure I gave you. The point is minor arc AB is less than 180 degrees because from A to B all the way around that way would also be arc AB. But it's telling us that arc AB equals 120 degrees. And so we know that that's 120 degrees out there. Now here's a rule of, or of circles for you. Angle ACB is what is called an inscribed angle. That may be a term that you haven't heard since 10th grade geometry. That's okay. I'll teach you the rule here and then we'll get to it again in future lessons. An inscribed angle has a degree measure that's one half as big as the degree of the arc it creates. In other words, if statement one tells us that arc AB is 120 degrees, I immediately know that x is 60 degrees, period. I know that before I even look at statement number two. Does that make sense? Likewise, if statement number two tells me that x is 60 degrees, I know by visually seeing that angle ACB is an inscribed angle, it's going to create a degree measure of 120 degrees for the arc that it creates. And so they've given me the same information. And at the point that you kind of realize that's what's going on, in some questions it's more obvious. In other questions it's a little bit more difficult. But once you do, you immediately can cross off answer choices A, B, and C. So this is essentially another kind of elimination rule for you, a little bit more to your elimination table. That if, that they're, if it's the same information, they're either both individually going to be enough information to answer the question, or neither of them will be enough. Does that make sense? Which brings us to the question, do we have enough information? Let's look at just statement one individually. Statement one in isolation. Is knowing that that's 120 degrees going to be sufficient or not to answer the question, is ABC equilateral? All right, what'd you get? The secret is what I said earlier. 
what I said earlier. I reminded you that the figure is not necessarily drawn to scale. And so your instinct needs to be, can I manipulate this thing? Can I change things? Can I somehow redraw things to where I get conflicting outcomes? Remember, that's our objective. If we can't get a conflicting outcome, then it's sufficient. But if we can show two different scenarios that will produce two different answers, then we don't have enough information. So how might we redraw this? Ah, well notice it's actually a yes-no question. So if arc AB equals 120 degrees and it's drawn exactly like it's currently drawn, where the test makers are kind of wanting us to realize that that's 60 and it happens to actually be an equilateral triangle, meaning those um, sides are symmetrical, everything else works out perfectly, 120 degrees left, split evenly, 60 degrees, turns out to be an equilateral triangle. Here's an example of a diagram where the answer would be yes. But is that how the diagram must look for arc AB to equal 120 degrees? Be creative. What if all that, all that is important based on statement number one is that arc A, B is 120 degrees. So I won't change that. But here's my question. Is there any reason the diagram couldn't look like that? Is there any reason point C can't be way down there? That's 120 degrees. This is still an inscribed angle. That's 60 degrees. But now when I complete my triangle, do we think that's an equilateral triangle? No, of course not. Visually, it's not. In fact, the way I drew it, it just kind of lucked, lucked out. Maybe that's a 90 degree angle. Maybe it's 30, 60, 90, right? Which is one of our common right triangles. Here's the point. That's still 120 degrees. This is not an equilateral triangle. So this figure, the answer is yes. This figure, the answer is no, based on the same information. So that is not sufficient. And you know what? If that's not sufficient, statement two gives us the exact same information, same exact thing, right? That could be 60, but that's not an equilateral triangle. The point is here, neither is sufficient. Hello again. Hopefully you found the information in that segment helpful. If you did, just imagine how much you would learn in the full lesson, or better yet, the full course. If you like what you saw, check out www.dominatethegmat.com for our full course offerings. So thanks for watching and go out and dominate the GMAT.